Hi, Tyler. Right, your audio's dead again. Nice. So no, your audio's died again. Good grief. You have no audio. No. We have everybody but Tyler. <laughs> there we go. There we go. go. Ah. Back. Back again. Back. All right, let's try this one more time before audio cuts out. I'm going to sound like a broken record. Hi guys, Tyler here with another wonderful edition of Focus on Astrophotography. Today we got the wonderful Scotty Lass, Katie Hughes. I hope that's okay that I call you a Scotty Lass. Scottish. So in case you, the Scottish. So in case nobody knows, Katie is from Scotland. Don't try um, I'm the just accent, give a little background. Tyler. What? Don't try the <laughs> accent, Tyler. Okay, I can't with that right now. Um, can do whatever. Katie I want. is from Scotland. She's. We'll let her give a whole story here in a minute. Um, she's a fellow astrophotographer. Uh, she's part of that wonderful group that we had on last week. We are Stella. Um, she's even got her own group there in Scotland, which I'll let her go over about. So, but first, let's get to know Katie and why she wanted to get into astrophotography. You know, how did she get to where she is now? So, Katie, take it away. Um. Well, I've probably told this story about a million times now. Um, I think I was about maybe 11 or 12. And yeah. um, my dad owned a set of binoculars and a handheld telescope. And um, one night, you know, it was like a 70% moon or something like that. And I seen him outside in the garden and I said, what are you doing, Dad? And he says, I'm looking at the craters on the moon. And I thought, yeah, right. But he took, <laughs> took me aside. Honestly, he took me aside, um, gave me the telescope and guided mm -hmm. me up. And I could literally see the craters on the moon. And nice. a little while later, Orion had come up. And he showed me the Orion Nebula. And that was me. I was hooked. You know, wow, what am I looking at here, you know? Um, but there was also, you know, the side to it. Well, well, my siblings were going to bed, even the older mm -hmm. one. Um, I got to stay up late because it's the only time you can do any viewing and observing. <laughs> so Yeah, you took worked... dad's interest. So, yeah, yeah I get it. it. Was a win -win I totally get it. Yeah. And... Basically, that kind of got me started. But mm -hmm. um, as time went on, you know, school, college, marriage, kids, they take yeah. uh, precedence over everything. And it wasn't until about six years ago, um, mm -hmm. I damaged my back and Oof. I needed to exercise, you know, to get it mobile again. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Basically, what I did was I, I spoke to my husband and borrowed his camera. He had a Canon mm -hmm. uh, 750D. And mm -hmm. I went out. Where I live here in Scotland, it's very scenic. It's a tourist area. So I went down to the local beauty spot, and uh, the Northern Lights was out. So I was all excited capturing them. But it wasn't until I got home, uploaded the images, that I could see the Milky Way to the left of my image. And I thought, mm -hmm. I didn't realize we got to see it that far north, you know, or that much of it. So that started me on a journey by going out every clear night. And I would travel, you know, the whole length of Scotland from the very north to the very south. And sometimes if our weather wasn't good, I would check further south um, going into mm -hmm. England and travel down there uh, on my own, uh, which terrified my family and my husband. But yeah, you know yourself when you're that passionate about something, you, you just have to go for it. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think if anybody's out there, they're either a photographer like me or some crazy person and they're going to see me as a crazy <laughs> person. So I just went for it and I never really had any issues as such. 
Um, yeah. So that, as I say, that was the start of my journey, um, you know, for like Whitescape Astro. It wasn't mm -hmm. until about two, maybe two years ago that mm -hmm. uh, actually that's a lie. It was four years ago when I got my first deep space object. Mm -hmm. And what happened there was um, I was kind of hoovering up all this information about, you know, how, how do I get to capture these things in the night sky? I had been on Facebook and seen Trevor Jones's Astro Backyard page, mm -hmm. and I became a complete stalker, you know, just stalking <laughs> these pages on Instagram and Facebook and anything else. But mm -hmm. the reason I did that was because he had a DSLR. Mm -hmm. He wasn't using a dedicated astro camera. So that excited me because I thought, right, I've got the DSLR, I've got a zoom lens, I've got, you know, the, the uh, remote shutter cable. So mm -hmm. I went out and I thought, I'm going to try this. And I pointed up at the Orion Nebula and um, I'm a general photographer. I do weddings and portraits, so I, you know, thought I've got all my set set up. And uh, when I seen the back of my screen, my stars were all trailing, and I thought, what's going on here? I had like the camera running for ten seconds, uh, which I would normally do for Milky Way between ten and twenty seconds to get the detail yep. and the, the brightness out. Yep. But uh, nope, this just wasn't working for me. So back to the drawing board, and then I realized, okay, he's using a tracker. I don't have a tracker. What can I do? So I adjusted my shutter speed down to five seconds, and I still had star trails. And I just kept lowering it and lowering it until I could actually see a sharp star. And basically, yep. I was down to one second shots, and I took about maybe 200 loaded it up and then I thought yeah. now what do I do? I knew nothing about stacking so I had to go and mm -hmm. find out that and once I did that um, I produced a beautiful red blob that's that's <laughs> the way I've always described it I've still kept the image to this day to keep me humble um, it was it's just a red blob but I got excited because I knew that it was the Orion Nebula and the color mm -hmm. was there I just didn't have a tracker. So that was next on my list. I had to go and buy nice. a tracker. And that that was me for the next two years, going out shooting uh, the Orion Nebula, you know, like anything that I thought I could get from my backyard. And um, I loved every second of it. But now I've fallen down the rabbit hole like many people do. Uh, <laughs> And uh, you know, like selling a kidney and <laughs> yeah. to a company yeah. for it. So yeah, I've got um, a great wee rig set up now. So I'm I'm really happy with what I've got at present. You know, good. So, there you go. So, how did you find it? I mean, you said you had a camera background. You did portraits and weddings. So. Yes. How did you know that you needed to adjust your shutter speed? Did you follow the? Um, I'm going to butcher this. It's the I call it the photo triangle. Where you can adjust it the the photo. Triangle. Okay, so that's yeah, how you you learned was by the triangle because of your many years of being a photographer. You knew that you had to adjust your your shutter speed to get the nice crisp sharp stars without the tracker. Yep. So that's good. I mean, what was the what was the other struggle? that you had to learn and figure out quick, not really quickly, but just along the journey itself, um, just using DSLR, other than the fact that you needed a tracker to get nice pinpoint stars. Well, where I, as I say, where I live, there's um, it's a tourist area. So we normally mm -hmm. have a lot of areas with dark sky, but where I am, there's a lot of hotels and things like that. Mm -hmm. So light pollution, was an issue for me, uh, especially if I was doing white field and wanting, you know, like the yeah. local mountain in the background. So mm -hmm. um, I knew how to shoot pictures during the day. And because of going out and catching the northern lights, everything has to be in manual. You can't yeah. do it, you know, because your lens is just going to keep searching and zooming in and out looking for, you know, light. And then 
you have to adjust, obviously, for longer exposures to bring in that light. So I knew about the triangle and I knew that if, you know, if I had my wide angle lens were wide aperture of mm -hmm. 2.8, you know, it was oh, a case right. of, right, um, yeah. I can only go, it was a, a Takina 11 to 16 millimetre that I still use to this day. So I knew nice. that I could go between, say, 20 and 22 seconds. But anything over mm -hmm. that, my stars would start becoming elongated. Yeah, yep. yeah. So yep. it helped with the fact that I did have that bit of knowledge. Um, mm -hmm. But there's, there were people that I met and th they had no idea whatsoever. You, you know, they were going out saying, I want to shoot the Northern Lights, but what do I do? And they were coming out with um, point and shoot cameras. And I'm like, you'll be lucky if you get a nice clear picture. But there yeah. you go. So yeah. Uh, so Ben, uh, Ben. Oh Lord, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that last name. Uh, we haven't gone over the telescope yet. Um, we're going to let we'll let Miss Katie talk about what telescope she has because I know she's got more equipment than just a DSLR for sure. Um, I'm just yeah. wanting to get the whole the whole experience of what, how Katie became to be Katie that she is now. Um, okay. So you, go ahead. Okay. Well, as I say, I, I started off with the tracker, the DSLR and the zoom lens, and yep. then I wanted to upgrade, so I bought the Red Cat 51 when it came out, and um, that allowed me to zoom even further. Um, mm -hmm. Super, super sharp, you know, um, piece of glass, so I absolutely yep. adored that. And... I knew that I could get maybe two, three minutes of guiding and tracking, but nice. I wanted to go further. So mm -hmm. I bought a Skywatcher HEQ5 mount. Nice. Um, I was originally going to go for the six, but mm -hmm. you know, um, I'm a small person and it took me all my time to lift the Q, Q5, that, let alone the six. <laughs> that six so, is heavy. Even for me, that six is yeah. heavy. It is really heavy. There's no way I could do that without damaging my back again. So um, I, yeah. stuck, I stick with the HEQ5. And mm -hmm. a friend I had put up on, you know, the Astronomy Scotland Facebook page that I wanted to maybe try and go a wee bit further. Uh, what mm -hmm. would be the best telescope for somebody starting out with a mount and things like that. And one of the the top gurus on the page said to me, I have a Skywatcher 72 uh, ED if you want to borrow yeah. it. And yep. I says, that would be great. So I went and picked it up, uh, came home and tried to set it up with, um, I have a modified um, Canon 450D, you know, just nice. an oldie, an old S. Yeah, uh, oldie. oldie and goldie. Yeah, but it's yeah. a wee workhorse. It's absolutely fantastic. It's never let me mm -hmm. down, and it was astro modified. So I thought, right, okay, mm -hmm. pick that up, um, and started shooting, and um, mm -hmm. the images I was getting back was just wow, you know, it was like yeah. So astro modified shot. cameras yeah the astro modified cameras give you a little bit more punch for sure yeah uh, because you're, you're removing that ir filter that's built into the actual sensor it's not for the mm -hmm. faint of heart if you decide to do it on your mm -hmm. own because i have big meat hooks as hands um i can't mess with those tiny screws i will literally i'll break something more than likely because um, that's what i do here at work i i literally <clears throat> We, we were on another show and Annie handed me a pair of binos. Um, she's like, and Scott always recommends for a good quality test, do the twist test. I twisted too hard. I snapped off an eyepiece. Yeah, it's big, big brute. No. Um, no. But yeah, if, you, if you're going to go with an astro modded camera, which I went with, a, I had an astro modded camera. Um, I know the, uh, well, you said it was the 450, which is, yeah. that's the T3i, right? Is that the T3i version? <laughs> Uh, Kiss X3 or something like that in the States. I'm not sure. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's honestly, it, it can be expensive. 
Um, that's why some people, if if you're on the cusp of you want to go up to the next level from either astro mounted DSLRs to dedicated astronomy cameras, you kind of have to outweigh the pros and cons because some of those services for astro mounted cameras are very expensive. They're anywhere from a couple hundred to almost a, a thousand dollars um, because yeah. someone has to take their time with your equipment and take apart and everything else and and just removing the RR uh, filter. Some people yeah. don't want that. They want that full spectrum. They want a piece of glass back in front of it. That way they can uh -huh. throw a telephoto lens back on it and they can get in focus and yeah. they can go from there. Um, so you kind of have to outweigh the pros and cons with modifying DSLRs. Not saying that it's good. It, it's good for some instances. Uh, that way you don't have to mess with power. Um, but you know, uh -huh. if you're wanting to take longer, longer exposures, uh, you got to deal with, uh, thermal thermal noise a lot of it okay. with uh especially yeah. if it's hot uh you have to deal with a lot of thermal noise in the post-processing not that it can't be done because katie's done it you know mm -hmm. but it's just you gotta wait again i outweigh it um so yeah so katie you got have you used that modified camera at all yeah i use it all the time um especially uh you know if i'm i'm just doing white field milky way shots mm -hmm. that type thing uh, so that it will bring through the nebulas that are in the Milky Way. Um, yeah. But no, I, and, and the same, if I go to Star Camp and things like that, I'll use my my uh, larger setup, but I also take my tracker and my modified yeah. camera. And what I would say to people is, uh, everything I got at that point, apart from my Red Cap 51, was all second hand, bought in buy and yeah. sell. And yeah. Um, I was fortunate that the people selling me these goods were, you know, taking extremely good care of their kit. Mm -hmm. so, yep. um, when I when I got my modded camera, I was just over the moon. But yeah. I would say it was uh, last year, last April, um, I upgraded and went for a dedicated astro camera. And Ooh. I went for the NWO ASI 533 color, and um, I loved it. absolutely loved it. Um, that um, has served well, really well. That has served you well, good. Yeah, I've got the mono version um, as well. <laughs> so, Ben, uh, oh god, Crossweight is that it? Crossweight, I hope that's it. Yeah. Okay, good. I got it right. It's a Scottish name, so I had to make sure I rolled the R. He's wanting to know what tracker <laughs> you used for your DSLR. Because, um, um, yeah, I don't think you mentioned I, that. No, I forgot, actually. Well, I I go, mine's is the Ioptron Sky Tracker Pro. Um, mm -hmm. Because when I bought it four years ago, that's what the top one was at the time. Um, so I went with that because it's got a built in polar scope light as well. Whereas mm -hmm. the Star Adventurer didn't, and yep. I thought, and believe it or not, I'm as blind as a bat, so I struggle, <laughs> struggle. So I thought the last thing I want to do is, you know, be wandering about in the dark trying to find Polaris through this. So I went yeah. with the eye option, um, but I'm actually thinking, uh, you know, that as time goes on, I want to get the. Star Adventurer GTI, that looks really cool. So I got one better for you. I got one better okay. for you. Uh, but the <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I mean, I don't want to knock anybody's product, but we can definitely take a. I mean, I can walk you through the Explore Scientific IXOS 100 because um, it, it offers just a, in my opinion, a tiny bit more. Um, it was mainly built for imaging or visual astronomers, but yeah. I'm not, I haven't done enough research on the GTI. Does Is it just the RA that moves on the GTI, or is it an RA and a deck? No, it's a go-to. Okay, the so it is, well, then it's the same. Yeah. It's basically the exactly the same. Um, yeah. I'm just, I'm a fan of black. I like black. I don't know. I mean, it all looks the same in the dark anyway, to be honest. Uh, hi, Beatrice. How are you? Um, so there was one question from Pekka. Um, I'll wait for um, 
Paul to possibly find it, but we'll continue until he finds it, and then we'll go from there. Um, okay. so you got the 500 or 500, the 533 one shot color, which is a great camera. Up oh, there it is. There's the question. I gotta hover over. So. Pekka has a fully modified Canon uh, 600D where the sensor is totally totally naked, so I'm assuming he's got full spectrum. Um, yep. He has some big issues when using an SCT 8-inch with bleeding stars. Tried a UVIR cut filter, uh, but to no avail. So I'm assuming he's talking about the corners, possibly. Yeah, um, he's talking about dramatic aberration, maybe? Uh, he, he, I don't know. Pekka, can you clarify what you mean by bleeding stars? Right. You're talking about the corners of the frame? Um, a little bit more clarification would help, bud. Uh, so he's, he's no filters. Oh, that's another one. Okay. So you, you got the 533. You said you had a Red Cat uh, 51. You have the Iopron tracker. You have an HEQ 5. Um, yep. Have you oh, used the 533 yet? And, um, and that's in the other the color one, yes, I've been using that for the past year. Um, mm -hmm. That was never off the red cat or the 72 ED. And um, I use a, an Optolong L enhanced filter as well with it. Um, yep. It should nebulate. And yep. I was recently gifted um, the mono version of the 533. <sighs> So I've got that now. I've got a full set of filters, but it's a case of uh, I've never shot in mono. So it's easy. I've, I've promised everyone that once the, I, you know, we're getting dark nights back in about a month's time. And yep. um, I'm going to set up the rig, make sure everything's up and running. And I'm going to maybe give it a try and hope, hope that I can pull this off. You know, so because I'm excited about trying mono, it's just that I've seen some people reviews saying, Oh, I had the mono, but I couldn't take to it, so I've gone back to one shot color. Um, but it's, I've, been, I've it's, been fortunate, some people have given me data, you know, like their mono data just to play about with it and use it in Pics and Sight and Photoshop and what have you, just to see if I can integrate all the the data mm -hmm. together and I'm, I've been yeah. loving it. So I hope I can yeah, do it. It's, it's honestly, it's, it's stepped up the game for me. Um, uh, granted, I still have one shot color cameras, but I only mainly use those if I'm wanting to shoot something and the moon's up. That's it. Other than that, I am straight on a Chrome cameras. Um, they, it's definitely a different change of pace. You're having to take longer exposures, but the longer exposures that you take, the more of that detail you're going to pull out. It is incredible, yes. especially hydrogen alpha on all that dark nebulae. Ooh -wee. Yep. So nice. It's so nice. <laughs> do you have, do you have, now I know you won a contest. Uh, Sean Nielsen, who's been on the show before, he had a contest, what was it, a couple months back, but it was for yeah. just an LRGB set, correct? Do you have uh, the SHO as well, or just the LRGB? No, I've got the SHO as well now. Um, I just purchased them uh, two months ago, maybe mm -hmm. about six weeks ago, and I've bought them from um one of the members on astronomy scotland so and mm. i know that nick babysits and you know babies his equipment so i know that the product he's given me is yep. you know crystal clear not a mark on them so nice. i'm excited so that's me i've got the full set what i need to do Good. is purchase the actual filter wheel um i need to pick wow. one of them up so that i can fit everything in you know so yeah yeah Yep, a good further seven by two will help. Hole, further down that rabbit hole, you know. You'll never get out. You'll never ever get <laughs> out. Probably no, pal. I will, I will probably <laughs> die in the out. hole. <laughs> yeah, I will. So what? What kind of targets do you like to shoot mainly? Do you like to shoot uh, nebulae, dark nebulae, uh, bright objects, galaxies, planets? Or are you kind of an all-around kind of shooter? Um, I try, like, what uh, your... I, to be honest, I haven't even ventured into the planet side of things 
It's always been mm -hmm. nebulae and galaxies. And mm -hmm. I am attracted to dark nebulae. So this is something I want to try. I want to try my hand at that. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody that knows me knows that the past 18 months, I have tried over and over and over again to capture the Witch Head Nebula. And oh. it just wasn't happening for me. Um, cloud would come in or something would happen and I just could never get it. And <laughs> then me and the, the, the two girls, Amber and Helena, Scott's last row, um, we went down, <laughs> Plugging them, uh, we went yeah, down yeah, yeah. to Helena's, which is like a bottle to sky, Ooh. and Ooh, nice. um, we we rented a farmhouse for the weekend, um, mm -hmm. so we all set up were rigged, and uh, it was just all trackers and DSLRs, you know, modified DSLRs, and I took a wide field shot of the uh, Orion constellation, and. Yep. Once that was processed, you could see um, the horse head, you could see the flame, you could see Orion Nebula, you could see the witch head. So that was me. I was like jumping up and down with joy. You know, I'm like, yeah, nice. finally, finally. But um, I'm a huge Marvel fan and Thor's yeah. my favorite. So I want to capture Thor. I want uh, to do the dump. So that's that's next on my list. <laughs> nice. Yeah, L LRGB on the Thor's helmet is amazing. It is honestly amazing. Uh, that, that's the only cool. thing is, Tyler, on the, the red cat or 72 ED, it's that side. <laughs> we'll have to get you a bigger scope then. That's what we're going to have to do. Yep. We'll have to get you something that can, has a reach. That's what we're going to have oh. to do. So you, you mentioned a group called Scottish Lass. What is that? Okay, Scott's last row is mm -hmm. myself, Amber, and Helena, mm -hmm. and us three girls. We meet up quite regular, and now no. Helena's a three-hour drive away, so mm -hmm. you know it's it's quite a distance, and we do meet yeah. up, and we decided, um, let's make our own Instagram page and let's show everybody when we're out and about and what we get up to and if anybody needs any help, questions, because we've got, you know, a, a wide knowledge base between the three of us and, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it was basically to record our excursions, you know, just for our memories and, you um, we decided we decided that we would go live one day, and mm -hmm. it was one afternoon, and it was pretty awesome how many people logged in to watch and ask questions. So we had a good laugh, and um, as I say, there's there's no holes barred. We just go on and we we put up stu stupid silly images and have a. I think I saw a and, mustache on. Did you guys wear oh, mustaches? Yeah. That's a given. Every time we have a chat, we automatically put the moustache filter on. And and what started as something just silly and fun has now become so normal to us that we don't even realise that we've got them on. <laughs> so I've got, I think I found the page. I want to do this, do this, do this. And I think everybody can see my page. It should. Uh, waiting, 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 waiting. Can you see it, Paul? No. Oh, you can't see my screen share? Nope. Darn it. Dag nabbit. Hang on a second. Hang on. I was wanting to show the the web page. Darn oh, cool. nabbit. Okay, and anybody okay, should join Okay. Good. So th this is what you were talking F11. about. F11. F11. Bink. There we go. All right, so this this is Scott Lass Astro. What was it again? Scott, Scott's Lass Troll. Scott's Lass Troll. Yeah, Scott's Lass Troll. Basically, Lass it's Scotland cut down to Scots because we are Scots. And uh -huh. the, Scottish, the Scottish word for women or girl is lass or lassies. So 
Yeah. Uh, we put in Scott's last draw, um, you know, just, just for the heck of it. And um, as I say, we, we have good banter with everybody. I mean, there's Helena with a moustache. <laughs> and that was, what, two weeks ago? <laughs> Y'all are crazy. As I say, we oh, are. Uh, we take uh, the mickey Robo of Fayuki. Yeah. That's, that's Nico cool. Carper. That's his data, and he gave us all uh, the data to play with it to see what we could do. Uh, it was a mm -hmm. challenge that he put up, and that was my version of it. That is hilarious. And that's where I live. That's on my back door. That's Loch Wow, Lomond. that's your back door? Yeah, that, well, what, what we call the back door, it's literally a, a like, a 60-second yeah, yeah. drive from the corner. It's Loch Lomond. It's 26 miles long, so we've got some magnificent scenery. And Nico Carver was here visiting just recently, and we all met up. So that was brilliant. That is amazing. Oh, there's, there's the, the witch's head. Yeah, there's so the image. So that's what you were talking red. about. Yes, and that nice. was with, that's with the Red Cap 51. That is you such know. a great little camera, great little telescope. Now, granted, with a, oh, now, yeah. you shot this with a 533 uh, or did you use the DSLR? No, no, that was, that shot with my Canon 450D modified and the Red Cap with the opto long wow. enhanced filter inside the red cap. I'm su I'm honestly surprised that it was a, the opto long enhanced was able to pull the witch head. Well, what I did was we took a, well I took uh, numerous <laughs> shots uh, the yep. UVIR filter and then with the opto long enhanced so that I could stack them all oh, together you, and try to like, you enhanced yeah, it and mm. blended it. Yeah. Yep. Nice. And these are fluorescent clouds, which are stunning. Um, you only yeah. get them if you're 50 degrees or more latitude, you know, so we're lucky. So basically I, need to, I just need to move to Scotland. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, and that was That's just a wee live of it and letting people see these actually as they were coming over the horizon. That's, that's insane how calm that, that little lake or pond is. Do you know that it's little not. loch? That little loch is over six hundred odd feet deep, and in some areas. No, that's not a loch. That's that's it's just the deep end that I'm staying out of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is crazy. So this, so people can find your page here, obviously on yep. Instagram. I'm going to leave it up for a minute. That way, Fabulous. people can see it. Um, and you know, just to, let me take it out of full screen. Uh, yeah, let me take it out of full screen. Uh, Leave it there. All right. I'll put it back. Um, thanks for uh, that guys. That's brilliant. Well, I mean, I, the whole premise of, of this show to me is I want to get to know, uh, the person I'm interviewing. Well, I, whether it's their YouTube famous or they're just getting started. I'm just wanting to know you as a person. That's it. Well, and what you do with the Astro community. And I want to make sure that I help represent that. That way you can keep driving, get members, more members. That way, if you're part of the IDA, the International Dark Sky Association, you know, I want to make sure that what you represent, I'm going to help push forward with you. So you can either get more members, you can get more notoriety, more notification, more awareness, whichever. And that's what I want to do here with focus on astrophotography and as well help beginners uh, get started with sequence or uh, setting up sequences and depending on which software you want to use to post processing, how to polar line, balance, set up stuff, you know, troubleshooting yep. tech uh, stuff as well. Um, so Ben's asking, so Ben's wanting to know how much Photoshop editing did you do? And I'm assuming he was talking about the, the one with the horse head, the Orion's yeah. Nebula, and the witch head. Um, that was quite a lot, actually. Um, I'll bring that picture mostly, back up. To... Yeah. I ahead. had only just, I had only just started uh, playing about with pics inside. Um, 
you know, it was a lot of information to take in. So basically what I did was just do the stretch and pick sense yeah. and play with the curves and then yeah. put it over Photoshop. And I spent um, maybe a couple of hours in Photoshop because as you can see, the stars are kind of bloated and yeah. that does happen when you're doing these long exposures. Um, so I thought, you know what, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to take them out. I'm just going to kind of soften them, make them more acceptable yeah. to the eye, because yeah. I wanted people to see, you know, this, this is what happens. You do get bloated stars, Ben, you know, uh, he was asking earlier and I found that it was because I was doing long exposures, whereas if you cut your time down you might not get so much bloating. Um, yes. but you would just have to take more and more subs. You would just have to take more images. But more I was just yeah. excited. I just wanted the witch head, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so David McLean, awesome. uh, David McLean says that Rick, I'm assuming Rick Marshall, uh, he actually visited Scotland um, two weeks ago. And their, their meetup was last Friday. been friends since 2014. Uh, bit video astronomy for him. Yeah, Rick's great with the EAA. He, I, I love Rick when he brings out all of his. Uh, he's got, a, I believe it's a nine and a quarter SCT. He just throws a camera on it and he just big giant white screen. You can see Jupiter. It's like it's right in front of your face. Um, Rick is amazing at when he does that. Um, so I know you're part of another group. Um, what do you do? with that other group and I'm going to bring them up as well so we okay. can show um, they're on Facebook and they're called Astronomy Scotland and oh, I'm go ahead I'm one of go the ahead. admins on it. um mm -hmm. I think there's five five admins and I'm one of them Helen is one mm -hmm. of them too and basically what happened was uh before covid um, mm -hmm. We maybe had about 600 members or so, and yep. um, after COVID hit and everybody was looking for something to do, so, you know, astronomy and astrophotography just went through the roof, um, yep. our fan base, our following base went from that 600 odds to over 3,000 within weeks. Um, it was what was the name amazing. of the group again? Astronomy Scotland. Okay. Astronomy Scotland. Uh, and it's a very active page uh, for people all over the world. You don't have to be here in Scotland. Um, yeah. It's just that we're based in Scotland, but we've got members from That's all over the globe. Um, and we have quite a few experts on it as well. We have uh, guest speakers. Um, mm -hmm. Like, for instance, we had the um, Astronomer Royal, Catherine Heyman's on. And um, mm -hmm. we've had some amazing um, Zoom meetings with, as I say, some of these experts, and it's just been wonderful. And it was the same yeah. for the Scottish Dark Sky Observatory when it got yeah, burned I'm, down. I'm not going to see anything because I'm not a member, of course. So that means that when I get on my Facebook, I'm going to have to join. That's my yeah. Facebook, yeah, I know. sir. That's why I said when I get online, <laughs> I'll have to do that. But I know, I know you're part of another group. Uh, we've talked briefly about it. Um, yes. What What is that other group, and what do you do for that other group? Okay, um, I'm a proud member of Stella. We are Stella, uh -huh. which stands for Striving to Engage Ladies in Astrophotography. I knew it had to stand uh, for something. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it stood for. Yeah, I'll be darned. Yeah, and that's basically women only, and it's just a safe place for the girls, you know, um, to kind of meet and discuss. We have weekly meetings. Um, the girls in the opposite side of the pond from me in America, they have their Monday meetings. But us here yep. in the UK, we have ours on a Saturday morning. Um, on Discord, we've got our own Discord channel, and nice. um, you know, it's a case of just sharing what images, discussing any 
issues we may have with equipment or if a new member comes on, you know, to make them feel welcome and yeah. we'll try and help them from basically starting from the very beginning and building their confidence and portfolio up. So there's a lot, there's a lot yeah. in it and they have some fantastic um, guest speakers as well and giveaways and things like that. So yeah, it's a wonderful group. That's crazy. You know? And is, is this is mine? done by a 15 year old Brazilian astrophotographer named oh, wow. Olga Wismay. That is insane. Yep. And she That's did fantastic. it in, uh, in a rural area near South pa Powell. Powell. San Sao Paulo. Yeah, and she was 13 when she took it. That's wow. nuts. Yeah, we've got some so, young members. Yeah. Really young members. Amazing. You know, that the, is the, crazy. The girls, uh, three sisters astronomy the girls they're young and they're on it um yep. so you know and we're all very protective of each other especially the younger members you know um so it's yeah. a fantastic as i say it's a fantastic community um i've been blessed with uh, joining stella and being mm -hmm. on instagram and interacting with people and meeting up with similar minded and like minded people like myself which is great so, so yeah. tyler yes paul we have you and i i'm in astrophotography we've been looking at doing some uh, interesting work with different kinds of cameras that were made for different different uh different gosh. whole things yeah so basically yeah. Uh, well, adopting paul, cameras getting at, yeah, he, well, Paul was getting at Katie. Maybe you can weigh in on this. So you yeah. heard the company called Red, right? The Red camera. Yeah. They're basically mm -hmm. cinematography cameras. They're all they're they're technically the, what they're built for. They're the Hasselblad of. Oh uh, wow! Video. Yeah. So these things are 8K, 120 seconds. Like it's it's nothing. They can just spit out frames yeah. like it's crazy. Um, do you think 18 bit? Is, yeah, Colored 18 out. pit on the dynamic range, wasn't it? Yeah, dynamic it range is eight. It's 32 bit. Um, oh my gosh, let me pull up the stats. Yeah, it's just it's ridiculous. It makes it, it made my oh, wow. mind hurt there for a minute. Yeah. It's it's rather expensive though. <laughs> oh, it's that's rather expensive. Pocket 35 cheese. grand's not bad when you compare it to a Hasselblad. I was going to say I, I, Hasselblad. I can, they are amazing and they've been going for decades but mm -hmm. this is this is I'd rather have a new truck. truck jeez i'd rather have a new truck <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're curious katie do you think that it, i mean obviously anything is possible with the correct adapters and stuff but do you think that you an astro you can actually get a good image with that thing me personally with a cinema graph uh, camera Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I wouldn't Why? think so. Um, in your opinion? You in my opinion, um, cinematography, uh, you know, well, in saying that, it depends how you would edit it and, you know, the speed of it. Yeah. But a lot of old cinematography cameras uh, come in, like, with sepia color more than anything. Mm -hmm. Um but as I say, that was way back then. So I would assume, well, you know, this things have codec came up is the Red Raw codec, and it is mm. literally raw photos, just like in wow. your camera. So just completely raw. It's, yeah, they're raw. Or yeah, ARW. Well, that, well, it probably would. Um, it would be good to try it. <laughs> oh yeah, just got thirty-five grand lying around. Yeah. So here's the raw acquisition formats. Oh, wow. And you can go down to uh, 480 frames per second. That's a, yeah. it's a still a 2K photo. But what what mainly this camera or you know, the cine cinematography camera is? It is able to pick up the lowest of low lights. Yeah, and yeah. That's and, and that's what astrophotographers try to do is always. Well, when I look at a DSLR, when I'm wanting to shoot uh, astrophotography, I want something that can that that's well adapted to low light capabilities. 
Um, yeah. And that's this thing. Paul showed me a video. It, it I, he called it the candlelight test, and it's literally just a guy in a room. Um, just I don't know. We'll say a ten by ten room. It's just got candles lit in obvious, just different spots. It looked like he was lit up like a Christmas tree. It was. It was he was yeah. perfectly lit, which was nuts. The effect of I mean, pixels that you can use on this is eight thousand by four thousand. That's bigger than some, most DSLRs. That's bigger than all DSLRs. That is crazy. It's bigger than every one of them. That is insane. Jesus. So I mean, I reached out to Red Camera just to see um, if of they had anybody. Gonna have, they're going to have the red or the uh, infrared filter on it on the sensor. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's, that's something you're going to have to. It's not going to pick up infrared. Well, I mean, that's again, like Katie mentioned before, is if if I'm able to put it on a tracker and take long exposure, then I can I can edit, I can pull out you that red. It'll take a picture of it. Them. You'll see it. Depends on your filter, I guess. Tr it, it does. I mean, I could put a filter in front of it to kind of negate it a little bit. Like if I want like a, an L Enhance or an L Extreme, which will bring in the red data, it will yeah. go through. It it, it honestly will. Uh, but I just I don't have thirty five thousand dollars sitting in my back pocket. That's not bad. <laughs> I priced this same camera setup with only did six K. Uh, yeah. The Red Weapon, which is a because uh, that's what I do is film, and I priced it out about four years ago, mm -hmm. and you can buy the Brain for about twenty five thousand. But you need a lot of accessories just to make it work. Get a and by the time I was done getting all the stuff I needed to actually film something, it was yeah. about 150 to 125 to 150 thousand. That's nuts. So this is a kit. The one we're looking oh, okay. at. Okay, so that's not that bad then. That's honestly no, it comes with batteries. Thirty five thousand is it's got batteries, it's got media. Yeah. Everything. It's got a, it's got an oh, LCD no. screen. It's so perfect. Yeah, used to be the screens were thirty grand. That's insane. they're cheap now. <laughs> Paul, what did it say that weighed like four pounds or something? Uh, oh, it's, the, it's only going to tell you the brain weight. It did That's tell fine. you somewhere can... further down in the specs the weight of it. Uh, let's see. Autofocus, remote control. Red code. It definitely did tell you. Um, it did I say it. it. I don't know exactly yeah. where it's at. See if you can't find the specs. Is there more another spec mode or anything? Go to product info. It may be under there. I'm not seeing that, but I'm sure it said it was like four, four and a half pounds or something. There's no way that thing was It's not that heavy. Pounds. It's really quite light really? because you have to put this thing on your shoulder and carry it around all day. Yeah. Well, you just put one of thirty thousand dollar little yep, gimbal that's thing. That's what we do. Welcome yeah. to our world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this is astrophotography. <laughs> 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 I mean, I, again, I'm waiting for a response because uh, Red responded to my email. And they're like, "Well, not specifically. That's what not what these cameras are for, but it depends on what ISO and your and ISO setting that you're wanting and your shutter speed." So I spouted yeah. off just a few shutter speeds and just say, "Well, it's kind of." You kind of experiment a little bit, honestly. Mm -hmm. Depending on where you are in the Bortle scale, you have to experiment because not they're not oh, all going to be the same settings. No, um, I still, I'm still waiting on a response from that. I'm that hoping they'll nice. let me send me a loaner. <laughs> yeah. I doubt it, though, but it'd be nice. It'd, it'd, I mean, would I be know nice. that I'm a Bortle 4, and mm -hmm. when I go down to Dumfries and Galloway, it's a Bortle 2. And mm -hmm. obviously, I've got to adjust my my times and my ISO and my speed because you know it's so much darker. So yeah, definitely. Paul, get that video camera and bring it to the Arizona Dark Sky Sight Star Party. <laughs> well, we'll try we it wouldn't out. have to light the place. There would be no, no white light, and I would yeah. be able to see everyone. Yeah. Uh, so Katie, let's. Well, we got ten more minutes, unfortunately. There's the way. Where is it? 
It's three, it four is. pounds, point three ounces. Four point zero three pounds with that body cap. And <laughs> I like how it says without card. body cap and a CF card. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna add about. It's just so heavy. It's, it's like 20 pounds right there. It's no. just 20 pounds. If you if you add the the battery, which is probably a good pound, yeah, and you add the monitor cables, the card, you're looking at about eight pounds. Is what I'm thinking. Wow. Man, and then eight if, to ten. Yeah. Yeah, and then you've got to put if you're gonna carry it around as a cinematographer. You're mm -hmm. adding another two pounds for the rig to, yeah. to put it on, but if you're That's putting crazy. on a if you're putting on a telescope, I think you could do it. If it's yeah. that's all you need is the brain, the battery, and the card. So you yeah. made a pound and a half, two pounds with the brain with the uh, uh, card and the uh, battery. Body cap. Oh, the battery. Yeah. Yeah. Not wow. Absolutely. That's. I'm, I'm waiting for a response. I mean, I doubt I'm going to get one, but it'd be nice, you know, if they sent me an old junker that they just have that they, they send out to people to try out. Well, that'd be kind of we neat. could we could try it with the Scarlet. A Scarlet is the cameras that don't meet the tech specs for these things, yeah. so they sell them as uh, Scarlets. And yeah, they don't kind quite of work as well as the actual production. Most mm -hmm. of the films that you've seen in the mm -hmm. past 15 years were either on a red camera or mm -hmm. a Panavision film camera mm -hmm. or the Airy Alexa. This is the Hollywood camera that you've seen for most of your, most of everything you've ever looked at. Oh, so that's what, that's what Thor looks like. That's why it looks yes. so good because of that camera. That camera, actually, they they do use this in the Marvel, on the Marvel films. This is so there the you go, Katie. Uh, if you want to just shine that over at your husband, it's like, yep, there's Thor. Yep, yep, definitely. <laughs> so we got just a couple more minutes. Do you have any advice, Katie, for again beginners that are that are getting into the hobby? That you know that that you struggle with that you would that just kind of give them any friendly advice, you know, to keep the little engine that could just keep trucking and keep going. And eventually, as you can tell with your pictures that it does pay off in the end, it really does. Yeah. Well, I, I would say anybody that's just new and starting out, uh, don't be intimidated by other people's images and saying, Oh, I could never produce that. And there's no way I could get that. You can get it. I know from experience because, as I say, I my first image was just a red blob and I thought, well, how come mine doesn't look like Trevor Jones's? Because <laughs> as time goes on, you pick up the tips and tricks. And mm -hmm. if you've, you know, if you're starting out, don't, don't be over eager. Set yourself mm -hmm. goals and don't put yourself into debt to get these things. Try and go on buy and sell websites. Try and see if anybody's, you know, wanting to upgrade and sell their stuff. Um, or buying because, a $35,000 cinema camera. Yeah. Like Don't jump down that deep end. <laughs> yeah. Don't but jump no, down that deep um, end quite yet. People do get intimidated to buy it and they think, you know, I need to buy all this equipment. No, you don't. Mm. I'll rent mine small. out. I said that to <laughs> Start off small and work your way up. Yeah. Don't just so you would recommend definitely. Yourself. You would recommend definitely starting with a DSLR if you got one, just to get Most just to get the feet wet. Yeah, yeah. Just to get your um, feet wet and get yep. a feel for it. And see if you actually enjoy doing it because a lot of people are like fair weather golfers. They might not like being out in the cold <laughs> and waiting all night for a cloud to move. You know, if if I still uh, fair weather golfers. Clouds, we would win at hands down here in Scotland, but oh yeah, 100, 100. Uh, Connor Bradley wants to know real quick, uh, what deep object, what deep sky objects have you captured while imaging the night sky without a telescope? Now I know you said the um, Orion's Nebula was a big giant red blurb. I've done the Orion. I've done the mm -hmm. North American Nebula. I've done mm -hmm. Bolt and Cigar uh, Galaxies. Uh, Andromeda is a big favorite. And these have all been done um, on zoom lenses. 
I have a Sigma 70 to 300, um, mm -hmm. which I use. And it's, it's not a, a fantastic lens speed wise. I mean, it's three point f three point five to five point six or six point three, but it's not bad. You know, it does it does what it says on the tin, and um, mm -hmm. if if you're patient with editing, you can produce quite a decent image out of it. So yeah, Perfect. a lot of my images that um, that you see were produced by zoom lenses, wide angle lenses, until last year when I got the dedicated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Katie, I, again, I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to come on here. Uh, give us a little bit of your background and your story, uh, mentioning the Scott's last Astro as well. Um, of course, we are Stella and the Scotland As uh, Astronomy on Facebook. Was that what it was called? Astronomy Scotland. Yeah. Astronomy, oh, Astronomy Scotland. Scotland. Astronomy Scotland. Yeah. So, guys and ladies don't forget to go follow those pages show support to the astro community um because that's what we do we we want to show support for other astronomy communities as i almost knocked my microphone over um again katie i really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to come visit with us today i want to appreciate the audience uh coming out and saying hello to katie uh yes, thanks, thanks mike i appreciate it you. Yeah, I really appreciate it. We're going to have one. I think we're going to have a final word from Scott. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the Arizona Dark Sky Star Party, um, yeah. just in case you aren't aware what it is. No, I'm sorry, Set Paul. Me just up like that. Shooting off the cuff here. It's what I do. Shoot off the cuff. Need to <laughs> be on the toes. It, you know, I don't even have it loaded. Toes. But it's fine. Jeez. It won't take you long because you're that good at your job. You are amazing uh, at it. See, you make me look good. You make me look great. That I have to go through right now. Yeah. You I'm make me luck. look amazing. I'm telling you. Uh, <laughs> we I did have to go it. through five or six different lenses to be able to yeah, find one that wouldn't crack. Yeah, it's true. And lights. Huh? We have to. We can't forget that the lights. He's went through twenty lights. Really has. You know, he's had to put dampers on them and all sorts of stuff to kind of combat the oof, it's actually just oh cgi it's not really tyler <laughs> well it, whatever works man whatever works <laughs> it's it works <laughs> it works that's all i care about as long as it works um but, but, yeah i, I really hope like to have you on again really later awesome. yeah, yeah I, really I, I hope to have you on again later because i'd like to come back and visit the you know how how you're getting along with the mono version of the 533 because hey. uh, i think I you're gonna that. like it you're going to like it. Yeah. You're going to like it a oh, lot. So excited. Yeah. I'm hoping to, if, if it, if all does go well, I hope they can get Helena on here too. And maybe the, yeah. uh, what, Amber or Amby. Yeah. Amber. Uh, get her on yeah. here as well. Maybe I can just, maybe we can do a, a dual partner or a, uh, you know, both of them on at the same time. Um, you know, just to try to get, you know, more different countries, Get them more known for like, hey, we got astrophotography over here as well, you know. But yeah. maybe over in Brazil, we can do the same thing. That's why I like about We Are Stella is you guys are yeah. spread out like crazy. Yeah, you guys are yeah. spread out. And if I can get you know each country, continent, whichever, to come on mm -hmm. once a week, oh, I, that'd be great. It honestly would be. That way we can spread your message of We Are Stella and just hear your story. Well, um, Stella will definitely spread the word for you, and uh, I'm sure you'll get, you know, a lot of the girls coming back saying, yeah, uh, they'd love to, because as you say, they're, they're everywhere, you know, they're all over yeah. the world. I mean, I, world. The, I mean, astrophotography is a male-populated or male-dominated area, uh, but I want to, I, I want to bring up, well, women are just as good as the men are, they really are, some are even better. Yeah. You we know, can multitask. I want to get, yeah, you can multitask. You can walk and chew gum just like we the rest of us. I know shooting Astro. <laughs> you know, Tyler I tripped get, over his feet the other day. Yeah, well, they're big boat oars. What do you expect? <laughs> so, but yeah, that that's what I would like to do is I would like to get more of you We Are Stella group on to A, get yeah. that word out and to get more of a female presence on the show. Um, yeah. And then, you know, and, and do that. So hopefully Scott's ready for his message over there. Yeah. yeah. 
Do you okay, want to he's ready. quit whenever we're done with Scott's message? Yeah, so once Scott's message will play, this will be it. So, again, Katie, I appreciate you stopping in. Folks, gentlemen, ladies in the audience, I appreciate you hanging out with us. Don't forget to tune in next week for Focus on Astrophotography. I'm not sure who the guest is yet, but I promise you I won't let you down. So, Scott, you take if it you away, sir. you want to see amazing Milky Way views, you want to observe the stars, you want to hang out with astronomers, but you love art and you love music, you're going to want to come to the Arizona Dark Sky Star Party, September 21st to the 25th, at Oracle State Park in Oracle, Arizona. It'll be an amazing event, and I know you're going to love it. Thank you.